Hello, everybody. This is Niao Niao. Welcome to a brand new live stream here in Lhasa, the provincial capital of Tibet. Yes, we are here in Tibet. You might already notice that because I am wearing traditional Tibetan costume and wearing this hairpiece, this lovely Tibetan style makeup. Do you like it? If so, let me know. We are bringing you this live stream from many different platforms, from our original CRI Learn Chinese Facebook YouTube. YouTube places as well as CGTN and China Plus Culture. So if you are watching from any of these platforms, you are very welcome to leave a comment, give us a little bit of thumbs up, and let us know what are the questions you have about this lovely place that is presenting the most exquisite tanka, which is a Tibetan art form that we're about to explore. And right here we are in Lhasa, and this place is actually called the center. Tonka Center of China, and because this place displays the most beautiful Tonka here. And if you are not familiar with Tibet. Uh, with Tibet autonomous region, actually it is the place in uh, the land area of it is around 120 um, kilom square kilometers. So that is roughly the area of France plus Germany plus uh, Italy combined together. While well, we still have a little bit land spare there, and as for the population, because actually Tibet is a really high altitude area. The average altitude of Tibet of uh, Lhasa is around 4,000 meters above sea level, which makes this place not that suitable for human activity, making it not that easy to live in, which is why this place has around, the entire Tibet has around uh, 3.5 million people. And if you want a comparison, the population of Beijing is 20 million. So yes, this is a beautiful, Real, relatively speaking, a scarcely populated area. And right now I am deciding where, well, let's say, we chose this place as our first station, our first stop here in Tibet, because what would be a better start other than art itself? So let's experience the art, experience the national cultural heritage of Tanka, and experience the beautiful painting, scroll painting that Tibet has to offer. So follow me and let's take a look at the beautiful Tanka. Tanka. As always, if you are interested in the live stream, if you like what you are looking at, you are very welcome to leave us a comment, maybe give us a like and share the live stream in your personal line or in your personal timeline, whichever platforms you are watching. And I would love to say hi to you. I am saying hi to Ahmed already. Happy to see you. And Ma Sadi saying, wow, what are you wowing about? Is it about my costume? or about the amazing Tanka. I think you're justified to do both. Hello to Wen Yat, to Kai, you saying your English is so good. Thank you. I guess you're not a regular, uh, let's say, friend online with me. You are very welcome to find me on CRI Learn Chinese Facebook page, YouTube channel, Ying Yuhan Zhou Guang Bo Weibo, as well as all the China Plus Culture and CGTN platforms. And if you're interested to know more about Tibet, you can follow our journey this time is going to be roughly two weeks. We're going to stay here in Tibet, visiting different cities, different places, and you won't regret following us. And also I'm saying hi to uh, Chen Ingbru, saying Lhasa. 是的, Lhasa. 我们现在在拉萨. It is the provincial capital of Tibet Autonomous Region. It is a place, it's a perfect combination of tradition as well as modern, because as you can see, we have all these really traditional art form, let alone religious, a lot of different culture aspects that you can experience and explore here. And it's also a very pop place. A lot of young people here in Lhasa would um, find their interest in a lot of different pop culture, including fashion industry, as well as, as far as I know, rock and roll music. So yeah, you can find some Lhasa rappers if you go onto the streets and look for some young people. So quite an interesting place. And since I'm already in the exhibition of Tanka, let me show you some really good and amazing ones. 
um, like any kind of art form, it will have its development path. It will have a fun history. So you guys can take a look and perhaps you can notice the difference between the styles of different tanka. Because as far as I know, there are four major styles and as since we are here, actually we can see at least three types of major styles in Tanka. So to start with it, you can see that Tanka is mainly a scroll painting kind of thing. Because for traditional Tibetan people, many of them were herdsmen, were shepherds. They need to travel along. And ever since the 11th century, when the religion of Buddhism was introduced, to Tibet, people started to um, wanted to have something to worship to, to let's say keep their faith in once, even when they are moving around, even when they're um, let's say traverse around the realm. And the way they do it is to have this very portable stroll of paintings that they can take with them whenever they want, whenever, wherever they go. And this is the first, let's say, origin of Tanka. And there's, of course, a very lovely story about it. People say that Song Zhang Gampu, who would be, I would say, one of the most famous Tibetan people in at least the Chinese culture. For Chinese people, if you ask anyone walking on the street, Joe Blocks would say, Ah, oh, I know, Song Zhang Ganbu, the princess Wencheng married to him, and he was considered the major king of the Tibetan or the then Tu Bo kingdom, the Tu Bo dynasty. And people say that it was because that he used a little bit of bleeding from his nose to start it painting on a piece of fabric. And that was the legendary origin of tongue of this beautiful art form. And since we talked a little bit about this, um, let's say, art form has a long history back even to the 11th century, it is not strange or it's not something um, hard to understand that this most, actually, I would say around 90% of traditional Tanka is themed with Tibetan Buddhism. So you can see it's the same with classic paintings in Western culture. It's mainly about their religion as well. It's about Christianity. It's about Jesus himself in your painting, different chapters, different stories in the Bible. And as for Tanka, it's really similar that this is also a let's say, art form with historic records of the Tibetan Buddhism itself. It paints um, Buddha, it paints living Buddha as well. If you don't know what is living Buddha, you need to keep track with us because we are going to explain and explore many of these cultural aspects. And right here, we can see they are actually um, displaying all these different kinds of pigment. These painting pigments are also very interesting. The one you're looking at right now is a, I would say, navy blue kind of pigment. It is a purely planting based pigment. So chun zhi wu, chun would be pure, zhi wu, plants. And if we move a little bit towards here, you can see these different ones, they are entirely ground mineral. So with no um, further manufacturing, with no further process, with any chemical stuff, they're purely, purely urban, or well, let's say uh, ground mineral, ground mineral. So ground mineral pigment. To start with, I was a little bit curious about how can you use this ground pigment as a kind of painting material to paint on your tanka, on your drawing. This is something very interesting. So I talked to people working here, the staff working here a little bit, and they told me I get to take a look at the mineral pigment myself, and that would be very interesting, and we're going to see that a little bit later. And right in front of me, I see this very interesting um, mandla. We call it tan cheng in Chinese, mandla, tan cheng. This carries a very, I would say, sacred 
and a very serious process in Buddhism, in Tibetan Buddhism. Um, for a piece like this, it takes around two to three lamas. Lama is basically monks in Tibetan, so lamas, they would spend around three weeks starting from the center and started to use this very fine particles of ground mineral to start paint this mandala. And they'll start from the center, slowly move to the um, sphere of it, and it takes around three weeks for this to finish. And after finishing it, they will find a very lucky and auspicious day, especially in the sense of Tibetan Buddhism, and they will stir it. So they will basically, quote unquote, ruin the painting because the purpose is never the painting itself, it's always the process. Though I do not really have any religious or I do not belong to any party, but I do believe in, in righteous, in beauty, in love. And I think this process represents our pursuit to um, a great process instead of just re the result and in this very fast speed day and age when everyone is trying really hard to get to the finishing line. I think this is a really great symbol representing this love and peace, calm and zen kind of feeling in, well, not only Buddhism, but also our lives. So something beautiful I'd like to share. Let's see what are some other comments you guys have here. We have Sensar saying, good afternoon. Ha amazing video looking so good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am with the help of amazing technician groups. We have light support. We have cameramen. We have everyone. So it is because of their effort that we can show you all these lovely uh, videos and live streams. So happy to have you. And uh, we are also saying hello to Akiv saying hi. Jisan, Vivian, you're here. Very happy to have you. Um, Altaf saying hello. Hello. Hello, friend. How are you doing? Hope you're feeling fine. Oh, thank you. Did you watch the a uh, picture that I posted on Niu Niu Chinese, which is my personal page, about me using a oxygen tube, getting my oxygen supply on the train. Like I said, this is a high altitude place. Actually, for Lhasa, we're living around 3,700 meters above sea level, which is pretty high altitude. So I am still experiencing a little bit of high altitude sickness. A tiny little bit, but my enthusiasm about talking to you guys about all these lovely tanka is a, is a clear cure. I'm feeling much better now. Let's continue to move. Hello to Sohan and very happy to see all of you coming in. Uh, we have Pretty, happy to have you. Muhammad Ali, hi. And Jason saying thank you. Vivian saying yes, respect is most important to us. It's awesome artwork. It is definitely awesome. Uh, Rubel saying I like the way you speak English. Thank you. And Mir is asking, what are are they? This is a special Tibetan art form. We call it Tangka in Chinese. Tangka, that is um, the kind of art form. Or actually, I can give you explanation this way. So Tan in Tibetan actually means a vast space, vast space. And Ka in Tibetan, you can understand it as a blank ready to be filled or the pursuit of perfection or something exquisite. So it has multiple or multi layers of meanings. And tanka, together, you can understand it as a message, a drawing message. But if we understand it from each and every word, it actually means a vast space being filled with perfection, just like the mandala we just saw, right? So Tanka, a Tibetan art form. Let's continue to move and see if we can find the beautiful ground mineral pigment that we were curious about. Let's go. This is a very beautiful yard, actually. If you are looking at what I'm looking at in this yard, this Actually, this yard has around 200 years of history. Previously, it was the family, the home, the house of a nobleman, but 
Well, during that time, Tibetan people were not living a very happy life because they were living in a serfdom society, meaning that around 90% of Tibetan people were with the identity of slaves. They were slaves of somebody, and that somebody is usually a, um, let's say, a official or a high-level living Buddha or high-level Lama, and perhaps sometimes a nobleman. It can all happen. So it was not very happy time for Tibetan people. Lucky for us, um, in the year of 1965, when the Tibet Autonomous Region was formed, we have absolutely wiped out the serfdom society off of the land of Tibet, allowing people to be the masters of themselves. They are able to, um, let's say, create their own beautiful lives with their both hands. So that was the time this yard stopped being a house of a nobleman and started to become the property, the real estate for the Tibetan people. And later, since we noticed this is a very beautiful yard, not only the home of some previous noblemen, but also a beautiful architecture, a exquisite art craft, in a way, architecture um, of Tibetan. So we started to relish it and do some protection work, making sure that this place can be used for something else. So nowadays it is used for something else. In the Tonka Center of China, you can see a lot of people experiencing and exploring new techniques in Tonka and also manufacturing Tonka, as well as doing some communicating and interaction kind of work, making sure this beautiful art form is appreciated by people who are interested in it. So let's continue to move and go into the, I'll say, secret or the secret, the top secret that made Tonka Tonka. Let's go. Oh,大家好。大家好,大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。大家好。
leave a comment, share or like the live stream as much as possible, no matter where you're watching. As far as I know, we are live streaming in all the platforms on top of CRI Learn Chinese Facebook page and YouTube channel. We're also live streaming on Weibo, on Yangshipin, that's our domestic outlets. We're also live streaming on CGTN, all the platforms of CGTN, as well as China Plus Culture. So very lovely live stream and lovely support. Hope you guys like it. And if you have any questions and comments, please let me know. I would interact with you directly. That's the beauty of live streams, isn't it? I can talk to you directly. For example, I'm talking to Deepak saying, the great China, great president. Not really sure if it is related to our live stream, but it's always great to have you on board with my culture. I'm very proud when you say that. Thank you very much. And we have Rubel saying, oh my god, this dress makes you look awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very nice of you. It takes around an hour to be like this with the, um, let's say, Tibetan sty style hair piece as well as dress. And if you are noticing this or if you haven't noticed, it's fine. I'm only with one uh, sleeve. The other one can be worn on as well. But the thing is, in Tibet, if it's not super hot, or let's say the weather difference is a little bit drastic. In the morning, it might be really cold, but in the noon, because of the direct sunlight, it is possible that it can be really cold. So the smart Tibetan people started to make their clothes not only stylish, but also very um, practical. So you can wear it with one sleeve, both sleeves, or both sleeves off. It won't hint be a hinder when you're working, yet it will keep you warm when you need it. All right, so this is only the first floor of the center. Let's go up there and see what are some other amazing things we are going to experience and observe. Follow me. Here I am in the second floor of here. Well, actually, this is the third floor. We come on up to the third floor uh, directly to show you guys different setting and different exhibition. And I have to tell you, I am ooh, catching my breath. This does not really happen so often to me after only several layers of climbing. But I have to tell you, high altitude, Respect high altitude, respect the plateau. Make sure that you're taking it easy in the first several days. If you're visiting Tibet, let's say for tour, for business trip, like us, you need to really calm down, embrace the spirit of Zen, embrace a slow pace of life, because if you don't, Tibet will tell you you are doing it wrong. So when we say railway trip in Tibetan style, not only are we saying this beautiful, amazing journey we are embark on, but also we're talking about Tibetan style, which is a little bit slower than my original style. <laughs> okay, so I am. Oh, let's use this opportunity to say hi to you one more time. Some of you are saying. I waited always your live stream, Yonio, because I know I will learn new valuable culture. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a nice painting. And I am too a painter. Pretty. Oh, pretty Man Ray. You're a painter. So are you familiar with this special art form? Are you familiar with Tonka? Let me know in the comment area. Uh, and we have AAAGBEVV -E Life saying, <laughs> oh, life is good, saying, Ni hao, chan de fei chang hao can. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, traditional Tibetan style, trying to blend in when you're in 
Rome, act like a man in Rome, right? <laughs> and uh, we have Laurie saying happy video. Thank you. You're very welcome. Aris Chan saying greetings from Malaysia. And thank you so much for sharing it. You are sharing. I can see it. Thank you. And we have Louise Clark saying it's very colorful where you are. It's very nice. Yes, um, here in Tibet, you would see that the traditional Agriculture, well, actually, architecture form is with the color white and red. That is their traditional combination. And as for clothes, it's actually very colorful. You see different kind of accessory and different color blending together perfectly. So something very special as well, I would like to say. Um, yeah, we also have Yuli Zhong Hire here saying those arts are very colorful, aren't they? They are, and they are pretty beautiful. Um, Dylan saying very nice, thank you. Ruben saying thanks for reading my comment. Of course, once you are sharing your comment, I will certainly say hi and have a shout out to you. And if you have any questions, not only I'm here, we also have the experts in the Tanga Center of China here with me as well. They are a little bit shy when it comes to talking to you guys directly through the camera, but they can certainly talk to you guys through me. So don't worry about asking questions. I'm not the expert, but we have experts here, so do not worry about it. And Zheng Wu Yangguang Qi Yue Hua saying, Li Hai de Niu Niu, Xie Xie, thank you very much. Sherry Yang Yang, Zhang Zhang, Hen Piao Liang, I agree. I think after Mongolian costume, I find another one that I really love, that is the Tibetan costume. I think it's really nice. Um, you know, saying thanks. It's great listening to you. Thank you. And we have Yu Li Zhong saying, does the design have a special meaning having something to do with Buddhism? Yes, actually they are. There are many different symbolisms. There are very strict rules when it comes to the painting, the proportion of the Buddha himself, the color of the face, of uh, the clothes, and the design, as well as let's say the accessories, they are all very different and all very, I'll say meaningful in a certain extent. And we can take a look at some of them a little bit later, so do not worry about it. Um, Vivian saying pigments from different stones uh, or what? Yes, they are from different stones. And uh, very lovely to have all these amazing Wow, so many comments showering me. It's like I am showered with love. Thank you guys so very much. And we have Yusuf saying thanks. Wish you all the best to the great China. Thank you very much. So keep the amazing comments coming. And we actually have um, some special treats a little bit later. So make sure you stay with us. And right now I'm standing in front of a workshop of one of the four national heritage barrier of Tonka here. So we are going to go in and I will very respectfully say hi to him and ask his permission to visit his workshop. So here we are in the workshop shop of Mr. Siren Luo Bu. Siren Luo Bu Lao Shi. Lao Shi Ning Hao. 老师您好,您好,您好,您好,跟我们大家打个招呼吧,大家好。Very happy to see you guys, and this is Mr. Siren Luo Bu, and he is one of the four national heritage barrier of the Tonka art form, so he is basically a national treasure standing next to me, and I am feeling very honored, so very happy to have you here. Thank you very much. Do I have your permission to take a walk in your workshop? Thank you very much. Thank you. So yes, this is his workshop. As you can see, so much honor, so much certificate, and very nice. Wow, amazing. We're really in somewhere special, and oh, I think this is a in-process tanka art piece. Like I said, for this one, um, this actually is one form of or one style of tanka painting. A signature, let's say, character of this tanka is that if you take a look at the background pattern, it is very exquisite and um, carefully painted, precisely measured.
I was told that if you take a look at the Buddha himself, his face, the proportion of his eyes and his face, his eyebrows, his hair, the length of his body, everything should be used or should be painted with the help of a ruler. So it must be very precise. Because, of course, traditionally, these kind of tanka art form was considered, or actually for Buddhism believers, they are still considered something that is, um, let's say, sacred in a religious kind of way. So they want to make sure everything can be as precise as possible so that a well-painted tanka might be the holder of a tiny little bit of Holy Spirit that they would worship too. So you can see this is painted meticulously. Very beautiful. And if we go around here, this is a tanka in the making. Actually, the canvas need a little bit of special prepare or preparation as well. Um, this is actually a white cotton, a very ordinary, normal, common piece of fabric. But from this, you cannot see it because the first step is to frame them on this wooden frame perfectly, making sure they are very flattened. And then we put on a mixture of water and um, a certain kind of pastry, mix, a certain mixture. You paint over it again and again, thinner and thinner, well, actually um, thicker and thicker, so that you would not notice or can't really see the white cotton from the surface and also that painting process needs both sides so it's both both sided would be covered with the pastry and then you take it out again to the sun to give it a really good sun base after a while we would use some really smooth and flattened surface perhaps a the bottle of a well the bottom of a bottle or some really nice egg-shaped rocks, so you use it to press on it and move again and again to make it again very flat and smooth, and then you started to put on the sketch and then painting, well actually I think it's the coloring process, and then the final touch is something in uh, Tibetan language, or in, as well as in Mandarin, called Kai Yan, so open the eyes. So actually, the last, last step of a Tonka painting lies on the painting of the eyes of a Buddha, a living Buddha, or whomever is the center character of that Tonka. So something special. And we see this Nihao, he's here, painting it a little bit. So, so this is the coloring of it. As you can see, it's very precisely painted. And the color is also, I would say, a little bit subtle to a certain extent and each and every stroke takes absolute concentration. Nice and slow. In case you didn't notice yet, there's no overdue when it comes to tanka painting. It has to be meticulous. All right, let's continue to walk and see some other forms of tanka as well. Okay, let's go.
let's continue to move to another room. Actually, um, like I said, this place is the Tonka Center, so there are more than one master working here. They're working on different pieces. Some of the pieces are still used for religious purposes, but some other pieces, actually a lot of other pieces, are used exactly as an art form, exactly as a collection for people who adore this amazing culture. After all, it is a China's national culture heritage. So there's no wonder that collectors would want to go inside and get a piece they like and, you know, brag about it a little bit to their friends. So let's see some other kind of painting. And here in this workshop, actually, we get to see another style of tanka as well. Let's take a look. I am actually talking to this side, this kind. If you haven't noticed, or if you have actually already noticed, you might find this color a little bit more strong and a little more colorful. You can see the main usage would be red and green. So there are a lot of the color red and green in this style of painting. It is also the oldest kind of tanka style that existed. And you can see that their style is with a little bit of Southern Asian style. The waist of a Buddha is rather thin, very slim, and their clothes is rather, let's say, suitable for hot weather. And it's very the color is very bright. And like I said, they are working right now. Take a look at their painting. Very beautiful. Great painting, isn't it? I do not want to disturb them too much because I don't know about you guys, but for me, when I'm doing something that requires absolute concentration that um, uh, allow me to block out all the voices and sometimes noises in my head, out of my head, allowing me to, I don't know, do some coloring or painting or sometimes even calculating or uh, doing research for our live streams that we're presenting now. When I'm doing those things, when I'm 100% concentrate, I feel both exhausted afterwards and super relieved afterwards. It's like when you're blocking the noises that does not belong to your brain out, you can act, you can perform much, much better. Not really sure if it's the case for everyone, so let me know in the comment area. So far, if you like the live stream, please like and, li uh, like and share and comment as much as possible. I will shout out to you as much as I can because I love interacting with you guys directly in our live streams. We are here in Tibet autonomous region and in the city of Lhasa. And right now we are in the Tanka center of China. Tanka is a Tibetan style scroll painting technique. And not only do we have scroll painting, we also have embroidery. Embroidery is also another kind of Tanka art form. So let's go and check out if we can find some embroidery kind of Tanka out there. Actually, this little yard is also pretty looking, and the architecture is very colorful and bright. I would say it's really with Tibetan style. It's my first time in Tibet, and besides the high altitude sickness, I'm actually very happy with what I'm experiencing right now. Again, they're working. Now I want to disturb them. Okay. I was told that in order to paint, what you need to do is to first paint on this paper. This is actually paper. And I am touching a line with needle puncture in. So needle impales this um, piece of paper with little holes on it, making it the patterns they need. And then they use a special kind of, well, actually it's over there if you take a look. 
special kind of press. It's a yes, it's a piece of cloth wrapped with blue pigment, and they use it to press on the paper so that the pattern would perfectly, um, I will say, printed on the cloth we're looking at. And then you have the making of each and every piece of cloth, each different pieces. Oh. And you sew them together. And afterwards, you put all these different, different pieces together, making them into larger pieces and making them into an embroidery kind of tanka. So that is another kind of style. And look at them go. They're working. I don't, really don't want to disturb them. Wow. We have Yu Li Zhong asking, how long does it take to finish a piece? It actually depends. For the painting ones, um, it takes still really long weeks sometimes. And if it's a really particularly painted one, it's even longer. And for the embroidery one, I would say perhaps it's even longer than that. Let's see if I can ask this question to some expert. Let's walk outside this way. <laughs> we have our friend asking, where's Jesse? Jesse started to be again the backbone of our art form of our art form of live streaming. Our live streaming is the art form that I like to present to you guys. <laughs> so yes, Jesse is missing and I miss Jesse myself as well. So don't worry about it. For our lovely friends out there, it is actually okay because even if sometimes due to time difference, you're missing a little bit of the live stream, you can always still watch the playback no matter which platform you're in. For today, perhaps you're watching from CGTN, all platforms on CGTN, as well as China Plus Culture, CRI Learn Chinese Facebook page, YouTube channel, and Yingyu Huanqiao Guangbo Weibo. If you're on any of these platforms, you can ask questions, give comments as much as you want. I will definitely shout out to you. Okay, let's continue to walk. <sighs> I, can, I think right here we get to take a look, <laughs> take a look at some other kind of tanka myself. Yu Li Zhong is saying, oh, I answered that question. Rain LV is saying, you look gorgeous with traditional costume. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very sweet of you. Actually, Yu Li Zhong asked, how long does it take to finish a piece? So we, I'm going to ask this to our expert. So we need to finish a piece of tanka? So we need to finish a piece of tanka. 然后就是大概是一米乘五十厘米的这种一米乘五十厘米的坦卡一位画师可能要画半年左右哦 oh, wow wow it's much longer than I thought so for the major ones for the one that is one meter by well actually half a meter it takes around half a year to finish half a year to finish a piece like that but I'm not surprised because for the tiny small ones, I think it still takes weeks. And if you did take a look at that one stroke, if you do one stroke that slowly and carefully, no wonder it takes really long. And like we mentioned in the very beginning, do you remember the process is the key. Result, good of course, but process is what we are pursuing now. Let's go into another um, exhibition hall and take a look. Here we are, ooh, watching some other kind of tonka painting. If you take a look at this one, its style is already very different from the previous one we looked, right? The previous one was a little bit like a, I would say, a grotto with the Buddha's 
um, architecture or sculpture in it, and you also have the little holes on the grotto surrounding the main Buddha. But for this one, you get to see that it's already changing, and the colors are no longer that strong and powerful. It started to be a little more subtle. And this one would only be qualified as a middle-sized one. We also have some bigger ones over there. Some bigger ones. And I noticed a really big and beautiful one. We've already mentioned um, different kinds and different styles of tanka. If you don't recall, the first one being the oldest, most colorful and very strong, using the color of red and green, and with no scenery, with no mountains and rivers at all. And the second kind of tanka is a little bit less colorful, and the most signature traits of it would be the beautiful patterns in the background, the really delicate, small, Paint well patterns in the background, and the third kind, I would say a little bit like this one, is again also beautiful, but with a lot of other elements as well. Of course, you see the traditional lotus flowers representing pure and enlightenment, but you also see rivers, you also see side scenes, and even sometimes pavilions next to the rivers, and sometimes even a pool. I even see a pool over there. So different kind of stories, different animal, different elements. So I would assume that this kind of tanka are even, I would say, a little bit more um, rich in its background and in its stories. And I was told that the next exhibition hall would present us with the embroidery kind of tanka. And I cannot wait to go and have a look. Let's go. Um, <laughs> you're looking like a little girl. Is it because of the braid? I seldom wear braids because braids, yes, look, make me look a bit like a little girl. But I really like it because the whole combination is perfect. It's really amazing. Let's go to the other one. And uh, on CRI Learn Chinese Facebook page, Giovanni is here. Thank you, Giovanni, for being here. Be a strong supporter. Very happy to have you here. And like I said, here we are in the exhibition hall showcasing the Tanka embroidery pieces. So these ones are no longer painted. They started to be embroideries. So they are, of course, with different styles, if you allow me to give a more precise description. You can see these ones are traditional embroidery. You can still see the thread going up, giving the pebble a very um, transcending, beautiful color. And these ones, in Chinese we call it dui xiu. Dui carries the meaning of pile on. So they're piling on different little pieces, like we experienced a little bit earlier. These you're piling on different pieces and you sew them together, making sure they stick together and form this, well, this one is a very serious looking um, picture. And as for this one, there's one more element. One more element would be this. These are actually made of shells. So you can see, I think it's an eggshell kind of white. So the yeah, eggshell. And they are, again, put it onto it to give it a different kind of color and different kind of feeling. And I watched this and noticed over there, there is another painting, which is a little bit brighter and whiter. Uh, and that, those materials were actually pearl, zhenzhu. So this is beike, with zhenzhu. Let's take a look at the pearl one. I think it's a little brighter. Ooh, it is, it is. See, this one is made of pearl, and it is definitely brighter and whiter. Again, different types of embroidery, but all in very precise portions in very bright and beautiful colors. And right against me, opposite of me, we see this huge major kind of tanka. We can see this huge, 
Don't worry about it. You're going to see it now. Yes, right now. That is the huge one. And I assume this would be a mentlia. Another mentlia. Remember, the process over results kind of art form. Amazingly beautiful. When you are appreciating this beautiful art form, let's see what are some other comments you guys have. We have Michelle watching from Australia. We have Sujin saying, giving us good knowledge. Thank you. I'm very glad. Actually, before each and every live stream, I would do a lot of preparation so that I can give you something, not only showing you the beautiful places, but also providing you with the background information you're in need. Hopefully, you guys love what you are looking at, what you're watching now. Thank you very much for this comment. Uh, also, Fumar saying, hello, Nyo Nyo, take care always. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Vivian saying, how long they studying in workshop? Isn't, is that free? Oh, that is also a good question. Let me ask the expert. We have Bai Yang Lao Shi answering all these questions. So Bai Yang Lao Shi, we are in Oh, Actually, uh, Ms. Bai Yang told me she is um, a staff here. Actually, she's also working with the, let's say, interaction as well as communication part of the center. And she said, actually, it's fully free of charge because it's a cultural heritage. We need bearer of it. We need more people to study it. And we love for this beautiful culture, this art form to be passed on to future generations. So it's purely free of charge. And the certificate or excuse me, the let's say selecting process is that we would or the center would go find some students who are not from very, let's say, abundant, rich background, who are from relatively humble background. They'll give them the professional education in terms of manufacturing tanka, and they will also allow them to study, let's say, basic knowledge, including, I don't know, Chinese, Mandarin, math, science, these kind of culture in, um, in other schools as well. So yes, it is free, it is fun. We are inviting you here. If any of you who are watching, who are interested in this amazing art form, you can come here to Tibet, to the city of Lhasa, to the Tanka Center in China and to learn this lovely skill, lovely art. Let's continue to work and see what are some other questions you have. Hello, Andrew from New Zealand. Very happy. And we have Tian Tao Tu Wan saying, How wonderful, the Xiao Jie Jie. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm extra tender, probably because I am experiencing a short of breath. I'm usually a bit more perky, but I hope you like it. And when we are doing live streams, we are mostly using English. Answering the question of English, Don't worry about it. We sometimes also do bilingual live streams. We would live stream in Chinese and English because sometimes I also work as a Chinese language and culture sharing kind of live streamer. So when we're doing that, we're using both languages. Hopefully that'll be a bit easier. But this one I'll stick to English. And if you don't understand, maybe you can watch the playback a little bit more often. So so that you would understand this language a bit better. Ooh, another beautiful art form. And uh, we can see that for this one, actually it is very nice and bright. And um, you can see the animals are arranged in this certain order. We have the elephant and then the goat, elephant, goat. And we have qilin, which is a um, mythology kind of animal, mythological Chinese animal and Da Peng Niao. It's a kind of bird in Buddhism. And if you notice this, or if you learn it from here today, actually these animals are always arranged in this specific order. Go to any um, temple, any watch, any kind of 
Buddhism related art forms, so they all, all look like this, so in that exact same order. So very interesting. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for um, saying that this costume looks beautiful. I agree with it as well. This is really nice and really, uh, well, yes. Uh, now we are looking at the name of this let's say the style of tangka, we call it mian tang hua pai, mian tang hua pai. You don't really have to remember it because I know it's a little bit too professional. Just remember that there are four different patterns of tangka, different, to be more precise, different styles of tangka. You see the very colorful red and green one. You see the very precise, very um, meticulous pattern background kind. And also you see the one that one has absorbed a lot of traditional Chinese painting styles. That one has been influenced heavily by, let's say, inland Chinese culture. For example, if you take a look at this one, you can see the background with beautiful mountains, rivers. It's really close to traditional Chinese painting. And the color is much more subtle, much more tender in a way. And also we take a look at this one as well. We, of course, we still have the lotus flower. We still have... Um, the main character sitting in the center, but we also are having willow trees and other kind of trees. I don't know if they're a peach, perhaps, and also a grassland in the background. So very interesting and very, I would say, a little bit more vivid, a little bit more down to the earth. And from this special art form, we already get to see the blend, the mix, and the interaction between different cultures. And they meet here in Tibet, the Indian culture and different civil well, Chinese traditional Chinese inland culture, different civilizations in different kind of form are mixing here and they started to be blended together and creating something even more beautiful and more complicated in a really good way. And right behind me we have this Again, huge tanka. I think if the one that is one by half meter um, big would take around half a year, this probably would take a year or a year and a half to finish. And judging from the result, I think the effort is well um, put in. So the effort is totally worth, we, it does worth the effort. Uh, we have um, Raba saying, though my sister is near Tibet um, or perhaps bordering Tibet, I am not much familiar with Chinese culture and in heritage, but I am enthusiastic and interested in Chinese culture. I am really thankful to Nyo Nyo for sharing such beautiful things. Thank you. Thank you very much for this. And Vivian saying, so amazing Buddhist masterpiece, absolutely meticulous. I agree with you. Nowadays, of course, people are still being very serious, very, let's say, um, respectful when it comes to the painting of Tanka, but not all of them are with the religion of Buddhism anymore. They are appreciating the art form itself because, like I was told, it is a perfect combination, a perfect Wit, um, witness of the culture blending together of the mixture of the development of the history of this amazing land of Tibet. From today on, we are still continue, going to continue to stay here and stay here in Tibet for around 14 days, around two weeks. We're visiting different places, not only here in Lhasa, but also to Linchi, to uh, Zhikaz, to these different places to try to find out what our people's lives are like right now, to try to appreciate these beautiful different art forms and cultural heritage and try to bring you the beauty of modern China. Hope you like it and thank you guys so much for watching from all these different platforms. Thank you so much for your support and your loving words. If you like the live stream, please like and share and comment as much as possible. And if you have 
any comments or questions, continue to leave them wherever you're watching this. We will be answering them in the form of words. And if you like, continue to follow us, follow our trip here in Tibet. Follow the uh, railway trip in Tibetan style. I will see you next live stream. Bye-bye, guys.